So Patrick, in the last segment, we made clear that when local mortgage banks were getting these loans out, that they weren't holding them. So they were counting on people making good on the loans. They, the CEOs, the brokers, they made vast amounts of money getting as many of these loans made as possible. And then instead of holding on to them and people paying their local mortgage banker, what happened to these mortgage loans? Well, going back really to after the Great Depression, we created what were known as these government agencies that they were kind of a hybrid called Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that would purchase from banks loans so that they could create more liquidity in the marketplace so banks could loan to more families that wanted to borrow. So if you consider that as kind of a starting gap, what we ended up with was Wall Street banks ultimately served that role as well. They would buy uh, thousands and thousands of these volumes and they'd put them into packages that they would ultimately sell to investors, Rocky. And the deregulation of derivatives during the Clinton era with Robert Rubin as Treasury Secretary, did that have any impact on how this was all happening? Let me put this into perspective. In 1998, when Brooks Lee Bourne started to find red flags in the, in the uh, global uh, derivatives market, it was trading at approximately 13 trillion. By the time we got to 2008, it was up to $600 trillion based on, on this criminal activity. And that's basically because of the lack of regulation that was in place. That's right. Before the changes during the Clinton administration. Don't look, don't find. It's all on. And the idea was that sophisticated investors were able to get into these pools to be able to basically gamble on all of these different products. But the bottom line, it was all built on a criminal apparatus. Okay, so these loans went from the, 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 the local mortgage banker. Yeah. Then they were sold to, to others. Mm-hmm. Like well, they're, they're hedge funds, these, these big investment banks. Absolutely. And then would they bundle those together and sell interests yes. on those bundles of mortgages? Those are the derivatives that you're referring to. That's right. There would be slices of different performance of those loans that could be then turned into different derivatives action, which this exponentially uh, created more, let's just say, investment activity in this right. particular performance of those Thank loans. you for your explanation, because this is something... Everybody in this country needs to understand Absolutely. because that deregulation is basically still in place. The repeal of Glass-Steagall is still a fact in this Absolutely. country. They've never reinstituted Glass-Steagall. And we're seeing uh, so many of these elements still in place that could put all of us at tremendous economic risk once again. And we're going to talk in the last segment about how we, what, what the solutions are in preventing that from happening. Uh, in the next segment, we're going to talk about the supposed insurance policies people were taking out. So as they buy these security instruments, these derivatives, they got, they paid for insurance policies to make sure they were covered if there were losses, correct? Exactly. We're going to go on in the next segment to talk about that phony fraudulent program from which, again, the people that were responsible for it walked away with literally billions of dollars collectively, some of them with individually many, many millions of dollars. And the American people were left holding the bag.